Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we're going to do a deep dive on some blocks because I would like to set some stuff up for a future build project and we need to start by crafting a few blocks that we've never really touched in the series before. And these are going to be colourful blocks. We're kind of hearkening back to the 1.12 update, which was the World of Colour update, introducing stuff like glazed terracotta which we've already covered very very briefly in which you take a bunch of dyed terracotta blocks and smelt them turning them into patterned blocks that can be used in a variety of ways but also we're going to take a look at concrete blocks which we haven't had a chance to obtain thus far well we've had plenty of chances i guess we just haven't taken them anyway for some concrete we will need a bunch of gravel we're going to bring a stack to begin with we're going to need a stack of sand because you will need four blocks of sand and four blocks of gravel in order to make the concrete powder but we will also need some dye to make sure that the concrete powder comes out with some sort of color there is no neutral color of concrete it has to be dyed one of the 16 colors which obviously includes white and black and some of the colors you might consider neutral but there is no concrete powder where you just add four blocks of gravel and four blocks of sand instead you have to add a dye and what you end up with is eight blocks of concrete powder concrete powder has a texture kind of like sand and functions a great deal like sand as well. If you place it against the side of a block like this, it is affected by gravity and will fall. And like other gravity affected blocks, if it falls onto the top of a non-solid block, the block will simply break, dropping as an item. The thing you need to know about concrete powder blocks is that when placed in water or whenever they make contact with a water block, whether that's flowing or a water source block, they will convert into a solid block of concrete and from that point onwards the concrete will not be affected by gravity it has a much more solid texture and can be more easily used for building so over here for the moment we're going to make a temporary display of each of the concrete and concrete powder colors so you can compare them because the textures are quite different you'll notice that the red concrete powder here is lighter and obviously has that grainy sand texture to it while the red concrete block is a very saturated red and doesn't have nearly as much texture to it it's a very plain looking block and in builds that we use concrete we're probably going to be relying on it for those properties a solid color for whatever reason a background or some kind of solid wall that you don't want to have too much texture to it concrete can be an ideal block in fact at the same time as we deal with concrete we should also be dealing with terracotta so you can understand the differences because at first glance you might imagine that red concrete and red terracotta look quite similar putting them side by side however will show you quite how different these two blocks are first of of all, this has ever so slight streaks to it, the kind of thing that you wouldn't really notice from a distance, but up close, the streaks in this are much more pronounced than they are in the concrete block. It kind of gives you the vibe of the original terracotta block that you find out in the Badlands. And in terms of colour, it's a little bit more pale. It's kind of closer to fired clay, which is the whole point of the terracotta colour palette. Before the World of Colour update, before Minecraft 1.12 introduced concrete, some folks would actually use a resource pack or a texture pack to completely recolor terracotta blocks to these more saturated versions, which might actually have been what prompted Mojang to introduce the concrete colour palette in the first place. Now the next thing we're going to do, I'm probably going to break down some sticks for this so I don't waste an entire piece of coal every time, is we're going to fire some terracotta in a furnace so that we can get hold of red glazed terracotta which will obviously be a very different block to the other three blocks we've put down here because it includes a pattern and red glazed terracotta has this kind of almost rose looking pattern it's got this sort of spiral and petals going on here but in the case of glazed terracotta I think it might be a good idea to make four of these blocks and put them all together because glazed terracotta forms one quarter of a pattern depending on the direction you're facing when you place it glazed terracotta can be arranged in a variety of ways and there are some subtle clues about how you can potentially line these things up. Let's say we follow the example of the white lines in the terracotta texture here. If I rotate myself 90 degrees to place the next one, we can connect all of those white lines so it forms a circle in the middle and the spiral patterns around the outside kind of link up together and form this exterior pattern that repeats as you turn 90 degrees. Of course, it's possible to place them in completely the opposite direction so the red dot in the center lines up and those spirals are on the outside of the pattern. Either way, it has this kind of 
of mandala effect to it, which I really like. Not the Mandela effect, that's a completely different thing, but a mandala effect. I'm actually going to bring red wool over because it feels like this section could use red wool for comparison, since that's another material that's available in 16 colors. And once again, you will see how different red wool is to each of these other colorful blocks. So while you might consider some of these blocks interchangeable when it comes to builds, especially if you're looking at a build from a distance, they each have their own subtleties, which are important to know if you want to use them for building. Now, I'm not going to go this in depth for every single color, but we are going to arrange all 16 colors of glazed terracotta, concrete, and their respective terracotta and wool blocks over here so you folks can see, at least temporarily in the world, what each of them looks like. So I'll come back to you folks in a second once I've done that because I've got a lot of crafting to do. And a short time later, we have all of the colors represented here. And I always love looking at these together. I always love looking at rainbow colored stuff in general. It's always so bright and interesting. And here, the interesting thing is we can see all of the subtle differences between the concrete, terracotta, glazed terracotta, and some of the other blocks here. So we've obviously seen red already. The surprising thing about orange glazed terracotta is that it's mostly cyan and blue, actually. It's got obviously this prominent ring of orange. Orange is the highlight color, but it's contrasted quite heavily with cyan, which means you can actually mix together cyan concrete blocks and glazed terracotta in the orange spectrum to turn out a really interesting floor design. Worth considering combining those if you want something a little bit different. But of course, orange concrete powder and wool, you're kind of going to see the same things patterned over and over again. And in the warmer range of colors, especially with red and orange and stuff, you don't see too big of a difference with the terracotta. Obviously, it's a little bit darker than the concrete counterparts, but it's only really when you start getting into the blues that there are some surprising reactions between the cyan and blue colors and the natural color of terracotta, which we'll get onto in a second. For the moment though, yellow glazed terracotta is this pattern here. It looks quite like honeycomb or something like that. Could work well with the honeycomb blocks that we're farming from over there in our honeycomb farm. The lime terracotta actually looks like the wedges of a lime, which is kind of sweet. I always like the subtlety of the green terracotta. I feel like this is an underrated block. It's kind of difficult to use because of the pattern, but I do think there's some really cool designs that you can get out of it. Cyan is one of the glazed terracotta patterns I find the least usable. It's got this big creeper face in there, which is obviously very Minecraft, but doesn't really have a whole lot of uses. And really it's at this point, after how subtle the green range is here, that you start to notice the major differences with terracotta. And this is because Effectively, terracotta is keeping some of that orange color and combining it with the color of dye. Instead of just flat out dyeing the material to be a solid color of whatever dye you put in, which is kind of the purpose of concrete. So the way cyan terracotta ends up looking so gray is that you're combining cyan and orange together and the pigments form a flatter, darker color. You'll actually see people using cyan terracotta alongside some of the gray colors of concrete to great effect, and especially because the gray colors of terracotta end up looking brown as a result of the combination with that orange color. But anyway, moving on here to the light blue, this one always reminded me of some sort of frosty crystal kind of texture would be a really good thing to use in tandem with ice if you're building some kind of ice palace, like a Superman Fortress of Solitude or a Disney Elsa ice castle, that kind of thing. And to the right of that, we have something I've always thought of as a shell pattern for the blue terracotta, although I've kind of come to realize that it's meant to resemble more of a diamond. I just think of it as a shell pattern because when it repeats, when you have lots of blocks of this together, it kind of looks like the shell pattern that people use to like Artex ceilings or something like that to get that kind of like wavy shell pattern finish. I'm getting pushed around by one of these frogs over here. Hey, let me push you back. But anyway, back down the line here to the pink glazed terracotta. A lot of these blocks are doing more or less what you would expect. And obviously pink concrete powder is looking very kind of light and airy. And in fact, this and the glazed terracotta were one of the things that people used to use for cherry trees if they wanted that pink cherry blossom effect before actual cherry trees ended up getting added in the 1.20 update. So kind of a cool throwback to the days when we used to build with some of those and they still have that kind of pink petal pattern that can be really useful if you want a block that complements that cherry grove vibe. Magenta glazed terracotta has perhaps the most standout design out of all of them, not necessarily because it's particularly usable 
incredible, but because it really stands out. It's got this big white outline around an arrow. And I honestly think while people say this isn't a particularly usable block, it has its uses, and you could end up using this for a navigational block if you wanted to. The main thing you have to bear in mind though, is that you only want one face to be visible if you're using it for navigation, because the arrows on the sides can tell you something completely different to the arrow on the top faces. These always remind me of those movement puzzles in like the early Pokemon games, for example, where you'd step onto one of these and then your character would be locked into traveling in that direction until you arrived on like a little brake pad or something, like some sort of block on the floor that would halt your movement and you can make movement puzzles out of these quite easily if you're a map maker and wanted to take advantage of mechanics like that. Purple Glaze Terracotta is a pretty cool looking one by contrast and while obviously it looks like it forms this kind of X-Men logo style thing in the center there's actually a couple of subtleties to this if you consider it on its own because you can take a look at this and in our Minecraft brains we think okay that looks like the hilt of a sword with the blade going off in this direction and if you look at it from this direction you can also see the outline of a pickaxe there so purple glazed terracotta i always felt has some hidden depths to it the brown glazed terracotta once again has some cyan highlights in it which once again could go quite well with some of the orange or cyan colors of material that's kind of worth exploring and there's a few of these that will actually go together in really interesting ways if you spend the time messing around with them a little bit but naturally the regular brown terracotta is going to adapt well to being combined with that natural orange terracotta color and you just end up with something that looks like a darker brown version of brown concrete. White glazed terracotta uses a lot of yellow and light blue and you can create this kind of sun pattern with a two by two of it and white terracotta is one of the blocks that always throws people a little bit because people aren't expecting it to be this kind of like white person flesh tone whereas contrasting it with the concrete here you notice that that really doesn't feel white at all by comparison and that is on Honestly, once again, part of the value of terracotta now that we have more solid color blocks in the game like white concrete. You can get some subtlety in there. Now we move on to my favorite glazed terracotta block of the bunch, light gray glazed terracotta. Always looks very refined to me. It always looks like it's got this arch shape to it, which can be very useful in older looking builds, a bit more Roman, a bit more kind of mosaic pattern, but still very geometric in the fact that it forms circles and has lots of squares on the corners and on the sides here that can join in different ways. By contrast, the darker gray terracotta is a lot more chaotic looking. I've always thought of these as looking like eyes of some kind and it sort of looks like this weird mess of shadows. I haven't really found great ways to use this in previous builds, so that might be a bit of a challenge for an upcoming build. There are some neat ways that they combine though. I've combined them one direction but we can potentially try it a different way by doing this and then you end up with this sort of cross pattern in the center so that could be something worth exploring as well and last but not least black glazed terracotta is probably the most goth of the bunch <laughs> i think it looks pretty cool though i like the fact they've incorporated a lot of red into this design and as i said before the black terracotta never gets completely black it always ends up with a little bit of brown in it and just ends up as a much darker version of the neutral terracotta color so hopefully that's given you a fun look at some blocks that you might not otherwise have been interested in making because there are subtle ways that we can use these in other builds from now on and if we want to do some mosaic floor stuff with the glazed terracotta then we can but there's also a couple of subtle ways it can be used to provide just the right hue in a pixel art mural for example like we could end up doing some cool stuff with that a little bit later end up with more of a graffiti style if we wanted to have a modern city you can imagine a little bit more shading and stuff goes into mural art in urban environments but for now i'm going to pack away my furnace and my crafting table we're also going to gather up all of these terracotta blocks and gosh they look like a colorful bunch when i've got them all in my inventory we're going to stash these away in the storage system for now and over here on this side of the room i have started putting chests in and we're going to nestle each of the glazed terracotta blocks in the chest with with the regular terracotta since there's no way we're going to have automated storage for all of these when I don't expect we'll be making a double chest of orange glazed terracotta anytime soon. On the other hand I am planning on gathering a double chest of a few of these other blocks in the near future. For now I put the concrete powder blocks in the corresponding chests on the floor since uh, concrete powder is affected by gravity so it's natural that it would be drawn to the floor and the regular concrete blocks are going to go over here on the wall. But at this point it's the concrete that I really want to focus on. In particular I'm hoping to use a lot of white concrete in the near future because I have a 
design for a build in mind, but I'm not entirely certain where the build is going to go yet. Because lately I've been playing a couple of other games, just to kind of blow the cobwebs out and maybe experience level design from the perspective of some folks who do it professionally. So like, being able to play through other games can give you some inspiration for environments to recreate in Minecraft. And one of the things that's really struck me about an area in Near Automata called the Copied City is how they're able to produce so many realistic looking houses using just a white color palette. There's so much attention paid to the shape of the architecture and modeling this environment that works so well. And it especially works for the narrative, which is about a machine who's trying to understand humans better and created this environment to kind of simulate an area humans would live, but with no texture whatsoever. And in the game, this is obviously kind of a potent metaphor for how a machine is just copying humanity without really understanding what is at the heart of humanity's actions. And in some areas, there are just these large blank white cubes where the machine doesn't quite know what to do with that part of the environment, or it's meant to feel unfinished or under construction. But I think that'd make a really compelling looking Minecraft build. And the white color palette is actually fairly versatile. We have some white blocks with more subtle textures. We've got wool, we've got stuff like mushroom stem, which I highlighted in the previous episode as looking like stucco, but in the right environment, that might look very white indeed. We also have snow and even powder snow if we want to go that far. I think it might be interesting to incorporate some iron stuff in there, especially iron doors and trap doors. Naturally, quartz is going to be a big part of this as well. Well, and in future we'll be looking at how to gather quartz in much larger quantities, both from piglin bartering and from villagers, since I can imagine using a lot of quartz in this build. Quartz is also going to have stairs and slabs, which some of the other blocks lack. But I think the purest white we can find is not going to be in terracotta, because white terracotta ends up being a very pink colour. Instead, we're going to turn to white concrete. So I want to be able to mass produce this stuff. The white dye is not going to be a problem since we have so much of that from being able to break down bones into bone meal and from there into white dye. We've had a skeleton spawner since the early stages of this world, it's really not going to be an issue. But once we have made eight stacks of white concrete powder, we need a way to convert all of this into concrete. And there are a few different schools of thought when it comes to that. Because if you're building from the ground up, it's perfectly possible to just build a wall out of concrete powder. In fact, you can get to the top of your wall and place concrete powder from the top down because it's affected by gravity. And then from the top line of this wall, you simply place water buckets along the side and they will flood water down, converting all of the concrete powder blocks into regular concrete as they go. And when all of the water washes away, you are left with a perfect wall of concrete. And of course, no longer affected by by gravity, you can do whatever you want with that. But naturally, that's not going to work if you want to build some stuff like overhangs, for example. If you're just dealing with flat walls, it's no problem, but if you're dealing with exterior features, you can't just put concrete powder in place and expect it to stay there. You could use something like string to hold it up, in the same way that we've used string underneath each of these anvils to make sure that they aren't affected by gravity. But a lot of players prefer to build with the solid concrete blocks already converted from concrete powder. Since we can't do that by crafting, in a 2x2 or 3x3 grid, we need to figure out a way to convert large amounts of white concrete powder en masse. And on Minecraft Java Edition, perhaps the most popular way of doing this is to create a kind of tray of water like this. We have two flowing water sources either side so that all of the water flows back towards us. Simply hold some of the concrete powder in your offhand with a pickaxe in your main hand and then hold down left and right click together because this will allow you to place and break the concrete, although it does get kind of chaotic when you place stuff faster than you can break it. But it's slightly easier to do if you're less than a block away and looking at the side face of the block you want to convert. By placing the other block immediately, you end up with a lot of the blocks that you've converted jumping away to the sides because they're being pushed out of that block space by a new block being placed, but the water streams redirect them in towards the player and eventually it should all end up in your inventory. So while we've been explaining that, I've managed to convert basically two stacks of white concrete in a fairly straightforward manner. Unfortunately, that method isn't possible on Bedrock Edition because it's not possible to hold blocks in your offhand at the time of this recording, and hopefully that's something that gets added to Bedrock Edition in future, but I think right now it's just considered a little tricky for mobile players to handle. So instead, one option you have if you're on Bedrock Edition is to simply pillar up with all of the concrete powder on top of a single block of concrete inside the same system of water stream. I'll demonstrate this with just a single stack. We can drop off into the water streams back here and 
that will give us a safe fall. And then all we need to do is dig out the lowest block in the pillar, and this will convert into concrete immediately on contact with the water, after which the remaining blocks of the tower should simply fall to follow suit. Once again, all of these falling blocks are going to make the blocks that drop a little bit chaotic, and you may find that some of the concrete powder blocks actually break and drop as an item instead of turning into concrete, because the block below them was in the process of converting while the concrete powder was still falling. So unfortunately this doesn't turn out to be the best method either, and converting concrete in bedrock does seem like a bit of a pain, so bedrock players, I would love it if you'd let me know in the comments how you find it easiest to convert concrete powder into concrete. Our next method of converting concrete is going to use a little bit of redstone trickery, not necessarily to help the concrete convert any faster, but to keep the stack of concrete in our offhand supplied with more concrete powder so that we don't have to worry about opening our inventory to refill this stack every 64 blocks we convert. First of all, we're going to dig a trench down here. We can just make a four or five block long trench. At one end of this, we're going to be placing a water source. I'm going to put it inside of a block that we can waterlog so that these stairs are just going to provide a flow of water and we want it to flow down into a hole in front of us like this. The hole here is actually really important since if we dig out the blocks to either side, the water is not going to flow to the left or to the right, it's only going to flow downwards into this hole, because water will always take the path of least resistance traveling downhill. And now if we place some concrete powder there and then we break it, we should find that the water just flows down into this hole and delivers the concrete back to us converted. Now digging over here, we're going to put a redstone repeater facing in towards the water with a redstone torch just powering it, and on this side over here we're going to position a dropper. We're going to fill the dropper up with the remainder of the concrete powder, making sure that we've still got a stack in our offhand. We're going to cover over the blocks on this side just to make sure that everything is nice and contained. And now whenever we place a block next to the stair, the redstone repeater is going to send a signal to the dropper telling it to spit out one of the blocks, and that's going to top up the stack of concrete powder in my offhand. So now if I want to convert a large stack of concrete powder, all I need to do is hold down right click and left click, and every time I place a block against the stairs here, the dispenser is going to refill that stack of concrete powder in my offhand. Of course, every so often, some of those blocks are going to end up on top of the stair, so we could potentially cover that over as well and make sure that anything that ends up on this block here is going to be collected by the player. Your position here is also fairly important. You want to be standing on the block directly in front of the water so that you don't end up placing two blocks like this and putting some concrete powder in front of you. You also want to be looking directly at the side face of the stair, but ideally at the side face of the concrete powder as well. So about here is the optimal position for it, where you're not going to be placing blocks anywhere other than on the side of the stair, and when you try and place a block on the side of the concrete powder, your position on the side of this block prevents you from doing so. It may occasionally be worth checking in here in case any of the concrete powder has flown off to one side. So once again, this isn't a perfect system, but again, it is a really quick way of converting a bunch of concrete. This isn't the kind of thing that you would want to go away and AFK for five minutes because some of the blocks that end up zipping off at awkward angles could end up despawning, but it's certainly a fast way of making sure a few stacks of concrete can be converted and end up back in your inventory. And in future we will look at more permanent ways to convert lots of concrete. This was just a temporary setup if you want to convert a few stacks, but sooner or later we're going to need massive amounts of concrete for larger builds, and so it's going to help to have a more permanent concrete harvesting setup. For the time being though, I'm happy just having introduced you folks to the concept of concrete if you hadn't had a chance to mess around around it with it before and hopefully it inspires you to do some more builds in your own worlds. That's where we're going to leave it for today's episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Pixlrefs. Don't forget to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.